So in regards to magnesium, magnesium is very important to a reef aquarium. And magnesium is a bonding agent for the um, calcium and the carbonate. So the structure of a coral is essentially calcium carbonate bonded by magnesium. So basically, this is your carbonate in the Thrive range. This is your calcium. And the carbonate bonds both of these two and keeps them in solution and helps to form the skeletal structure of the coral. So most people test calcium. They try and keep it around 220 or 250 parts per million. Most people test alkalinity or KH and they'll try and keep it around 8 up to 12 DKH depending on what you're trying to do with the tank. But not really that many people test magnesium. So some people go along the theory that if your calcium and your alkalinity and pH is correct, then you assume that your magnesium is correct. And depending on the products you're using to the bulk of parts, that seems to be the case. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good idea to get it tested every now and then or to get a test kit. So it, you're normally looking for a magnesium of around 1300 parts per million. But once again, it is determined by the products that you use and the success that you're actually having with the aquarium. So magnesium is nowhere near tested as regularly as pH, KH and calcium. So I consider those three to be absolutely crucial to have a thriving reef aquarium. But a lot of my customers don't actually test magnesium and still have thriving reef aquariums. So other people work to the theory that they match the calcium supplement with the magnesium supplement, which means for every um, mil of calcium they're adding, they add a mil of magnesium, and they assume this to be correct. Um, and uh, as I said, to most um, um, circumstances, it seems to be okay. But if you do test it, then that's the only way that you can be sure. Other things such as um, coralline algae as well, you will find that increasing the magnesium level of your aquarium will help to um, encourage coralline algae and will help to disencourage your um, noxious algaes. So I am a big fan of raising the magnesium. Raising the magnesium will also help the growth of the corals, but it is also important never to add these chemicals at the same time because they can bond and fall out of solution. So if you add alkalinity one day, then you can add calcium the next, then magnesium the next. If you don't have time to do that, then just try to space them out. So maybe that one in the morning, that in the middle of the day, and that in the afternoon. Try to let them go into solution without each other. Now moving on, not many people test iodide. Um, if you run to a regulated dose, you're pretty much fine. Iodide is a great thing to add. It's nowhere near as important as those three, but it's a great thing to add to help the immune system of your coral. Um, strontium doesn't seem to be the most important thing in the world, but for some of your um, SPS corals, it is quite important. Um, it is a part of the skeletal structure of a coral, so um, it is a very good um, thing to add. And then you've got the potassium supplement, which um, is, seems to be very much tied up with the colours of the coral. Helps to encourage co colours um, and um, and overall does give it very good result. So anyway, if you can put a little note down the bottom with um, whether you've used the Thrive range, um, any tips that you have for someone deciding to use the Thrive range, and um, the general results that you've got from the Thrive range. It's a very impressive looking product, this lovely looking flask type thing, and they do make a refill pack. So once you've bought your initial one, you buy a refill and you fill it up. Um, that seems to um, be fairly economically and um, environmentally friendly idea. Yeah, give us your feedback and your experience with Thrive, particularly versus other products.